I finally had a chance to sit down and talk to somebody that gives Spanish lessons here in Monta. When I came here, I wanted to go to Spanish school. I wanted to go and sit down and learn Spanish and learn proper Spanish, but I couldn't do it because of the pandemic and everything was closed down. Now everything is open. I met this gentleman named Manuel Buccelli. He is a Spanish teacher extraordinaire. He has classes all over this country. He's very popular. He's very reasonable. He's very good. And I interviewed him today. As soon as I come back, I'm going to share it with you. Hey! Oh, rock a cheek. Hello there. So here was our interview. We met this morning for about 15, 20 minutes. There was a, a lot of construction going on. They're building a hotel two doors down from him. And I'm hoping that it's not causing too much of a problem with the interference, but I'm, I think it's gonna be okay. I encourage you, everybody that comes here that doesn't speak Spanish, that go take some kind of lesson somewhere. You know, whether you do it with Duolingo on your phone or some other online method, now you can, there is a place you can go here in Monty and go and sit down. As you can see here from this picture, here's a young lady that's been taking lessons. Got an instructor there and he's got a board and he just writes everything down and it's just like school, you know, it's just like going to school. And uh, as you'll see from our discussion that I think his rates are very reasonable and uh, here's how it went. So we finally get a chance to sit down and talk and we, this is a topic that I've discussed with other people for months now. Mm -hmm. And before I came here, when I wanted to come to Ecuador for retirement, the first thing that I thought about doing after I got here was take Spanish lessons. Mm -hmm. Go get into a classroom situation and take classes, and then the pandemic hit. And then, of course, when I came here, nobody was open. Nobody was, everything was strictly online, and I had no place to go get lessons, okay? I ran into a subscriber a couple weeks ago. His name is Ian. He is the one that told me about you, exactly. and so I, that's why I asked you for a chance to sit down and talk, and we want to talk about taking Spanish lessons, especially for expats, okay? Exactly. Yes. So how long have you been get, doing this? How long have you been doing Spanish so lessons? So we started in the 2000s. 2000. So by now we have 22 years, 22 years. Uh, running as a, as a Spanish school, and before this, I started a Spanish school in another beach in Manabí, okay. in Bahia de Caracas, long time ago, yeah. in the 90, 1997. Okay. And then we stopped that because it was an earthquake, a strong earthquake. 2016 earthquake. Uh, 20, uh, 1998. Oh, there it was, was an earthquake in 1998? Exactly. Oh, I didn't know strong. that. Strong. In, 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 in all Manabí, but Bahia de Caracas was the worst. Oh. There we had the Spanish school. And then we have to, to, to close the school. By the way, the building where we were working, it was destroyed. Then I restarted with the business in the 2000. Mm -hmm. Seeing like Manta, in that time, uh, the United States has the, the base. Yeah. So we thought that it would be a good, a good, uh, a good thing. You're talking about the military base? Exactly. The military base. Okay, exactly. exactly. So we started thinking about getting uh, people, students from, from, the, from them. Mm -hmm. But unfortunately, they, di they didn't. We just started Batmanta, like a beach. Yeah. It was a nice place to visit. Actually, we were uh, the first Spanish school by the beach. Okay. So if many of the Spanish schools in Ecuador are in Quito, Cuenca, Baños, but no one at the beach. Okay. So I decided to come to, to Manta and, uh, and do it at Spanish school here. So how do people find out about you? Do, do you advertise? So, uh, we normally have websites throughout the, throughout the media, mm -hmm. uh, Facebook, Instagram, Facebook. but we also have representatives. Okay. Agents, travel agents who sell our programs abroad. Okay. We have agents in Europe, in the States, and uh, all the world. Mm -hmm. And we also have a Spanish school in Montañita. Okay. Actually, the school in Montañita we started nine years ago. Oh, wow. So af after ten years after 
uh, we opened the school in Manta. We start with the Spanish school in Montañita with a, with a partner. Okay. So now all of your instruction is, is it one-on-one or do you do like classrooms of people or? In Manta we do more one-on-one -on -one classes. Like I saw downstairs. Like you saw in the uh, downstairs, exactly. Okay. We actually, we don't have many, many students here in Manta and so we, we need to do it privately. Sure. But once per month, we run a program we call Traveling Classroom. Traveling Classroom. This program uh, travel around the, around the country okay. doing four weeks. The first week in Quito, the second week in the jungle or Cuenca, the third week in Manta, and the last week in Montañita. Okay. Right. This program is sold by the other four all the whole for a school, which are partners, our yeah. partners. Yeah. Everyone is selling the program, and we receive once per week a group doing okay. doing a week at every location. And this program includes Spanish lessons, uh, accommodation, and all the activities, okay. cultural and different activities. Okay. So I, I, I've heard that Spanish, the way Spanish is spoke here on the coast. Mm -hmm. It's a lot different than the way it's spoke in the Andes. That's uh, that's that that's it's true. People here doesn't pronounce the the words because they speak a little uh, very fast. Okay. Yeah. Speaking Boy, speaking <laughs> fast speaking fast they don't get the whole word properly. Yeah. yeah. Like Quito, the best Spanish spoken in Ecuador, we say that it's spoken in Loja. Loja. Very clear, yeah. very right. clear. And people in the, in the highlands, in, mm -hmm. in Quito, also pronounce very well because it's, they take the time to speak. What about Cuenca? Good as well. Yeah. But they have a singing. When they speak, they have a small singing. It's a okay. very nice... Okay. Yes. So, so, when you, so what is your recommendation as far as how people... You know, how many classes do you need to take? How often do you need to take them? Do you have like a full course curriculum where you say you're going to learn verbs today or this week and then you're going to learn nouns or pronouns or how, how does it work? We have a structure, we have a okay. curriculum and we will run with the curriculum. Okay. And uh, actually when someone comes and have some knowledge, we take a placement test to okay. see how is he or how is she. Yeah. So we know at that moment when we can start. Okay. And sometimes we receive many people who doesn't want to be or running a, 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 a curriculum. Mm -hmm. They just want to talk and find situations. Okay. Vocabulary to, to be able to ask things in the restaurants or to be with a doctor or come to the her airport or to a hotel, ask for a room, mm -hmm. uh, many situations. We, we call this like a survival Spanish. Okay. So we That's are like able... <laughs> exactly. Well, actually, we are able to do survival in Spanish. Okay. I think many of the expats could be interested in this kind of, of structure, mm -hmm. just learning to, to be able to, to talk with the people sure. in different situations, in the market, in the bar, in the restaurant, everywhere. So what do you recommend? It's like, let's say I want to take Spanish lessons. Yes. Okay? And I call you up and I would say... First place, how do you pronounce your name? Manuel. 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 And your last name? Buccelli. Buccelli. Mm -hmm. Manuel Buccelli. Correct. By the way, I'm going to put all this information down in the description. Okay, okay? sir. And is it okay to put your WhatsApp number? Yes, thank you, so you very much. Thank you very much. People are going to be calling you. Okay, super. So, if I want to say, let's say, Manuel, I need to learn Spanish so I can get around here and talk to my doctor and talk to the people at the pharmacy and mm -hmm, exactly. the grocery store and so forth. How long do I think, how long will it take me to get to the point where I can have <clears throat> some semblance of a conversation with somebody? Is, is, there, is there a good answer for that? Or yeah, that it's, it's, difficult to, the, it's difficult to answer that question yeah. because peop, some people have more skills than others. Mm -hmm. Some people speak more than one language. When oh, you yeah. speak more than one language, you already know the structure and the grammar concepts. Okay. You already know what a noun is, what an adjective is. And if you speak only one language, maybe the Spanish teacher is going to be uh, explaining the concepts. Mm -hmm. What a noun is, what an adverb is, what a 
complemento directo, few con grammar concepts. Yeah. So we will, we, will we, will have, we will take more time on those situations. Mm -hmm. But also there are people who are, who are very good learning uh, foreign, langu foreign languages, yeah. so it's yeah. very fast. Do you think age has anything to do with the ability to learn Spanish, or does it, can it hinder? Like, I'm 70 years old, and I, I have it stuck in my head that I can't learn Spanish, I'm too old. Mm, no, it's, think it's, I think that? there's not an impediment. Impediment, you say yeah. in English? Yeah, impediment, yeah. We, we, I don't think so. But of, for sure, a 20 years guy is going to be the mind more fresh than the a 70 years uh, person. Yeah. But if you have constantly practice, practice. immersion, if you are able to talk, if yeah. you like to, to, if you are not afraid to talk in Spanish, that's the that's the key. Yeah, not maybe you will. That's a good point. You you will make a lot of mistakes. Yeah, sure. And we, as well, teacher, as a language school, we are not going to laugh about your your mistakes. Yeah. We are going to help you to correct to correct every mistake that you have. Okay. And you don't be afraid to talk with the people. People yeah. likes. Uh, visitors. Yeah. People here are very, very, uh, how do you say, uh, open mm -hmm. to make foreign friends. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It also helps to have a boyfriend or girlfriend. Oh, for sure. The, <laughs> the best, the yeah. best way to learn a language I, I hear is a, yeah. <laughs> is so between sheets. What, what do you think about learning from watching TV? Do you think that's? I think that helps that? to see news. No, news. Okay. News. Yeah. Because these people, the news, how do you say the news announcers? The, the, uh, the reporters. The reporters. Yeah, yeah. They speak very clear. Have yes. you seen? And it's a very good practice to see news on the TV. Yeah. And starting like the, in that way. And then movies with subtitles. Then you are Movies with subtitles. Yes. Okay. You are comparing. If you are hearing Spanish, but you are be able to see if what you understood is what they are saying in the subtitles. Okay. What about reading? Helps a lot. Helps a lot? Helps a lot. Okay. But just starting with uh, children's histories. Okay. It's more and it's more and very basic uh, reading material, mm -hmm. like history for children. Just starting okay. like with, with that and then improving. Okay. I know that a lot of the schools around here are speaking both Spanish and English. Uh, do you do you confer with that? I mean, I, I don't get it. That one of the schools, the local schools here for yes. the young children. Yes, they're teaching like 60, 40, 60 percent Ecuadorian, forty percent English. Do you, are you familiar with that? Um, I don't know. Well, I I, I, I was think just there told. are. I haven't been able to confirm that. Yes, I think there are one or two schools here who do that. Private schools. Private schools. Private schools. Okay. Public school. The 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 so English yes is not not too good okay, not too right. good. So for an expat that's coming here, let's say an expat arrives next week and they get settled in, and they want to learn Spanish and they've contacted you, mm -hmm. work out all the financial part of that mm -hmm. kind of thing. And let's say they're 65, 70 years old in mm -hmm. that time frame. What do you think? Under normal circumstances, what do you think is a, a reasonable expectation that they'll learn Spanish well enough to be able to get along in the community? What's a reasonable time? Six weeks? Six I, I will recommend. I will recommend eight to twelve weeks. Eight to twelve weeks. Okay. Exactly. Get, for a good Doing spot. a current schedule, right? Okay. Maybe they don't have to do an intensive classes. Okay. Because we receive many students who comes only for two or four weeks or eight weeks, yeah. they come from Europe only to study with us. They do four hours per day, Monday to Friday. Okay. But mm, most of the expats comes here to live, so they have enough time to get yeah. the time to learn. Actually, it's better because doing two hours per day, five or three days per week, mm -hmm. it will help. Okay. Because Actually, you will find many situations to, to practice what you are learning at the school. Yeah. So now, do you charge like per hour or do you we charge, charge like... We charge per hour. Per hour. Per okay. hour, exactly. Do you care to discuss the cost of that or do you want people to just to call you or... 
you mind telling me what you charge? Yeah, for sure. $12 per hour. $12 per hour. Exactly. Okay. Right. Exactly. $12 per hour. Private lessons. Private lessons. And we, offer, we also offer group lessons at $8 per hour per person. Okay. But sometimes uh, there are two or three what persons. Kind of, what, kind of, what, what, what kind of lesson for $8 now? Group. Group, okay, with, group lesson. Okay. With a minimum two people in the class, okay. maximum six. Right. That's the charge for group lessons. Maybe you are coming with someone else who has the same knowledge of Spanish, basic or beginner, or the same knowledge, more or less, and we are able to do a group with two. Okay. We are able to, yes. How often, like for a newcomer, how often should they come? How many times a week? How often? Yeah, how often should they come for a class? Uh, per week. Per week. Once three a week, times. Week. Three to five times per three week. Three to five times per week. Exactly. Okay. Three to five times. For an hour. For an hour or two hours. Okay. Depends on your time. Depends on your on your plans. And then, uh, did you give them homework? Sure, okay. we do homework. But there are some people who doesn't like homework. <laughs> <laughs> but we ask to at least know the vocabulary. Yeah. They no need to cabinet. practice the vocabulary because maybe you I am going to teach you what a table means, mm -hmm. mesa. Yeah. But every time we will remember what a mesa mm -hmm. is in English or right. in your language. But you need to practice. Maybe it's recommendable you have small cards okay. with a new new uh, new vocabulary, and every night you can spend some time, ten minutes to to see what have you learned in the day, yeah. and then it will be to your big memory. Yeah. So, what do you think about Duolingo? <laughs> I think it's very good. Do you? Uh, yes. So it's a good, like a good reinforcement. Exactly, that's, exactly, that's for yeah. sure, for sure. Actually, I recommend to my boy, to my children, my son, yeah. is doing Duolingo, okay. and he's improving. Good. He's a, yes, he's in a in a private school, and he he the English lessons that they receive are very good, mm -hmm. and he's improving with Duolingo, doing ten or fifteen minutes every day. Yeah. Yes, it helps for, to him. Uh, so do you have, do you, do you run across very many people that just give up and say, I just can't do it? And, you know, I got to cover the good and the bad here. I mean, I know that there, there's been a couple of times where I've tried, before I came here, and I was yes. studying Duolingo, and I just said, I just can't do this. I just can't learn. I can't remember. What do you say to those kind of people? I didn't get the question well. So For those so, people who are not... Motivated to, to learn or they're not learning? They're they're and they just give up. You know, they give up. Like like say I'm trying to teach somebody photography. Yes. Okay. And you just don't understand it, and you want to give up. You don't want to quit. Okay. Okay. And then my job is to try to to get to the root cause of what the problem is, and find figure out why you want to give up and why is it being so difficult. So I imagine in Spanish, taking Spanish lessons, I envision myself, because I know I've done it a couple of times where I've said, I can't learn this, I just quit. You will stop, I, I quit. quit. Yeah. I mean, so how do you, what, how do you we, always, we always try to get a um, combination of few things to, to teach Spanish. Not just grammar or conversation, we combine everything. Okay. Actually, conversation, grammar, Written and all our exercises, mm -hmm. and we try to fit our program to your needs. Okay. So in that way, you will feel motivated. Okay, motivated, yeah. Motivated, that's the key. And we also do a few other ex extracurricular activities. Okay. That's correct in like English. What? We provide salsa lessons. Oh. Cooking lessons, students make a typical dish with my wife, yeah. and uh, we visit different nearby markets in Manta. All in Spanish? All in Spanish. <laughs> Actually, in the kitchen, you yeah. will find words or situations yeah. that very practical yeah. words of vocabulary. Yeah. Cooked, fried, and she teaches the students all the new words That's that they idea. never find. Yes, we, we run cooking lessons, but we prepare typical lessons like yeah. biche, what well, you have taste, yeah. biche, ceviche, different typical food Ecuadorian from here, food. Ecuadorian food, yeah. exactly. That's a great idea. Mm -hmm. And then you said salsa, that's dancing, right? Yes, tropical, She's not salsa. just salsa, yeah. salsa, merengue, cumbia, 
good do as well. What about tango dancing? We don't do tango. We don't do tango. Argentina. But we don't have yeah. tango teachers here, I think. I Maybe there is. a great is. movie last night called Assassin's <laughs> really? Tango okay. yeah. with Robert Duvall, and it was filmed in Argentina, and it's about tango dancing. Ah, really? There's a little bit more to it than that. He's an assassin that goes down there okay. to kill a general. But while he's down there, he's, he meets this lady, and he, he takes an interest in learning tango. Okay. Well, it turns out that the lady that's in the movie, is in real life, it's his real wife okay. uh, here in Argentina. But... I, I, I thought, God, I'd like to learn tango. tango. <laughs> salsa. Salsa would be interesting, too. Exactly. I would think that would be exactly. fun. Exactly, yeah. exactly. Okay, so I'm going to put everything in the description about you and your how to contact you. Do you have a website? Yes, we have you a website. Okay, so it's, pretty, it's pretty easy. It's the name of the city, mantaspanishschool.com. Okay, I'll write that down before okay. I leave, okay? okay? And I'll get all that information. Uh, how is business? Are you are you busy now? I mean, do you have clients coming in? So Manta is is we have less students than Montañita. Okay. Like Montañita is very popular. Oh wow. Yes, we have Manta has some weeks have more students than others. Yeah. But I know Manta has a lot of people who needs Spanish, but it's a good a good uh, chance for us that you promote between the expats. Yeah. living in Manta and wanting to, to be able to communicate with locals. Sure. The best way to get to the culture is to learn the language. Yeah, yeah. I, I totally agree with that. Mm -hmm. I totally agree with that. I tell people all the time. I mean, a lot of people say that some of the barriers to living here is, you know, the culture, uh, the noise, the language, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know. But you never, I, I never hear language first, you know. Yes. I, to me, I don't consider the language a barrier because I manage to get by. And yes. I use translator, and I'm yeah, exactly. learning, I'm learning yes. mm -hmm. as much as I can. So, but anyway, well, thank you so much for thank your you time. Thank you, Dan. I really for, appreciate Thank it. you for helping us to promote sure. between your, the Absolutely. community. Absolutely. Our services. By the way, you have a beautiful house here. Thank I, you very much. Really, thank you very much. It's amazing when you look at property from the outside on the street, you have you cannot realize that yeah, you have no idea what it's like inside. Yeah. Actually, we have a Spanish a familiar Spanish school. Yeah. All the students coming here is like our family, oh. we, a small family run by uh, by uh, sure. by my wife and me. Sure. Yeah. And we have just four teachers working with us. So it's a very familiar school, uh, receiving the students like members of the family. Yeah. So, are you Ecuadorian born and raised? I mean, yes, I, I, I born here. Okay. I born here in Puerto Viejo, very okay. close Puerto to, Viejo. to Manta. How did you learn English? Practicing. Practicing. I, 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 I take uh, English lessons in, in Quito, in okay. the Catholic University. I did two semesters. Oh, okay. But what I help more is talking with, the, with the, our students. Yeah. The students come in and didn't speak anything. At the beginning, we speak in English, yeah. but since the second day, it's not allowed yeah. to use any other word. Really? <laughs> yes. We need to yeah, force, so, you yeah. need to be forced to, to practice. Yeah. We yeah. try to always be practicing with the students. So what? If, so let me ask this one last question, then we'll cut it off. What if you just can't think, like a, say I'm, you're teaching me, and you're talking to me in Spanish, and you won't speak to me in English, and how you're trying to get me to say something. What if I just can't remember the word? Do you like give me a little nudge? Graphic. Little little oh, graphic. Oh, it's a good idea. We use graphics. We use we, we use we use graphics. Yeah. Writing the word in Spanish, and you see yeah. visually you make the, the word yeah. the, to make the connection with a graphic, yeah. and you do the graphic or something that you want to explain. Yeah. That's the the best way that I will teach you. Not with the translation, because every time they want to remember one word, you are going to think the word in English. It's not a good thing. Yeah. You need yeah. to remember the graphic of the thing. Good point. Good point. <laughs> okay, we'll cut it off there. Thank and you very much, Dan. Yeah, thank, thank you very much for your time. Right. That's it, and I hope you give Manuel a call. If you want to take some lessons, get in touch with him. I'm putting all of his information in the description, his website, his WhatsApp number, his email address. It's all in the description. Please get in touch with him. He's a local guy. Let's give him some business, okay? And let's learn some Spanish, all right? Thanks for watching, and I will see you on the next one. Ciao, ciao.
relax, relax, Shadow. Yo, Captain, Shadow, relax. Yo, Captain, Shadow, relax. Yo, Shadow, relax. Yo, Shadow, stop, stop. Yo, Shadow, 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 stop.